Jackson seen on the field today? What's his status right now with the club? Uh, right now he's back and um, you know he's in a, back in a non-active role, and uh, you know it's good to see him back and uh, happy to see him again. How important is that insurance with not knowing how severe an injury to Jackson? Well, that, those are always. Uh, you know, personnel is doing a good job to make sure that we're covering areas that we need to be covered in. So, like I said, uh, kudos to Brendan and those guys to make sure we have somebody in to uh, cover ourselves. The status of Dwight Anderson? Oh, Dwight, vet day. That's it. Now, uh, he had that toe that he hurt the uh, first play in the Edmonton game. It's just one of those things. Just thought we'd give him one more day of rest. DBs do so much pushing off, so he'll be good. He's a vet. He knows what he's doing. How about Rob Bag? Rob Bag, he practices well today. You know, he even called a deep ball today. Uh, you know, Robbie's Robbie. I, don't, I hadn't heard him complain about anything. He's just been full tilt. You expect him to be back this week? Uh, well, we'll see as the week goes along. Like I said, that, that's one day. Uh, it's always tougher to say yes and no early in the week, but as the week goes along, I'll be able to make a more educated um, you know, guess on where he'll be on game day. In previous weeks with other players, you've kind of erred on the side of caution with guys with injuries. Is that a consideration this week? They're, they're not as tough as Robbie. <laughs> Robbie's mentally tough. No, it's just one of those things to where, you know, uh, like I said, it wasn't much there. It might have been just a little bit of swelling. It's just, you know, it's, it's his pain toleration and, and uh, how well he functions with uh, having a past injury. Will Diamond Ferry play this week? Uh, there's always a possibility. Of, you know, like I said, uh, well, it give me um, time toward the end of the week, and I, I can really tell you where the roster would be. Well, the yeah. discipline that had Dwight Anderson after week one, there was some reading. Is there any recommended reading for Diamond Ferry as part of discipline this week? Oh, yeah. There's a, there's always some things that, you know, each each guy, each individual guy I, I deal with in a different way. So, uh, like I said, there, there will be, uh, well, there are some things that we talked about today as far as uh, discipline with the team. So, uh, we'll continue to move forward from there. What would you need to see from Rob back this week to make sure that he would be good to go in your mind? Well, the biggest thing is how does he feel? You know what I'm saying? Um, Rob's going to always feel like he's ready to go, but you know, we turn the film on, he needs to look like he's ready to go. Well, what about the, does the knee brace slow him down at all or not? No, I think that's more of an insurance policy. Just, it's really more so for his mindset than anything. Um, the, the injury doesn't really require a knee brace, and no matter what he does, it's just one of those things for stability, more so of his mind. You said you want to look at more film on couple of diamond fairy penalties what did you see well you know the one diamond you know the uh what was it how they actually tagged you know i thought the one where he hit him low you know his head his head was above the knees and so was was his uh, arms you know so that's a tough call like i said uh it was one of those things where you know it wasn't intentional he's trying to make a play uh and that's that's a tough call like i said there's some calls that they called and some they didn't that's a tough one but the uh one after the play you know the extra stuff and that's the stuff that uh we can't have is just the extra stuff you're starting to get some other guys back Mike Mm -hmm. How do you kind of work these guys in? Well, you know, the biggest thing is making sure that they use this period now. You know, they've been in rehab with their injuries, now using this as a conditioning period. So when uh, they're actually on, uh, off the uh, injured list and ready to go on the active roster, that they're, uh, they're in shape if we want to uh, put them on the active roster. What makes Winnipeg dangerous coming in? Uh, there's a lot of things that make them dangerous. One, they're a professional football team, like all the other teams in this league. But two, they've had so many changes that, you know, uh, right when you said, okay, Marcel Bellafay may do this, he may do that on offense. Okay, Max Hall may do this, Buck may do this. So it's pretty hard, you know, so it's one of those things to where we have a game plan in place, but we'll have to make some adjustments in the game when we see exactly what they're doing. The mandate in this league is to protect the quarterback, but Diamond Ferry's one hit, is it, does it go too far sometimes, or do you like the calls you're seeing? With Diamond's hit? Well, any hits you're seeing with his. Oh, no, you know, they're, they're, you, you want to protect the quarterback. You know, I don't think Diamond's hit was vicious or anything like that. I think that was a, uh, you know, play of football. It's, it's kind of like the helmet to helmet. You know, uh, it, it's very tough to hit a guy from the chin to the knees, you know, when you're playing full speed in football. And it's not like we do it a lot, you know, so it's just one of those things where you, we want to clean it up, continue to practice the right way so guys end up in the right position when they tackle. Have you been talked to by Tom Higgins about the Weldon Brown play on whether or not hits to the head and turnover should be reviewed this week? Uh, I haven't had any conversation with him. Maybe you had one with Brendan, but I haven't had any conversation with him. How are you feel as a coach being able to possibly challenge a call uh, where it's a hit to hit creating a turnover? Uh, you know, me personally, I, I don't think that's, um, that's something that should be challenged, you know, because I, I think that can be interpreted any kind of way. 
we just need to continue to do a good job of protecting the quarterbacks and uh, playing football. Corey, not football related, but I wanted to ask you about 50 years ago today, I know you weren't alive, but uh, the March on Washington, Martin Luther King. Um, mm -hmm. Did that play any significance in your family's life or the people you grew up with in Birmingham, Alabama? Or? I think it plays a significance in the whole world, you know, especially right now. Like I said, uh, it, it was just about integrating people from different cultures, whether it was uh, different races, different mindsets, everything. I think that um, it was one of those things that, you know, uh, you talked about having a dream and, and, and the dream is here, you know, whether it's black, white, Asian, whatever it is, there's a lot of different things to where people have uh, different cultures, creed, and everything are coming together to be one. Do you think Dr. King's message is uh, still relevant today, and do you think they've come as far as Mr. King would have liked to uh, 50 years ago? Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, there's always improvement in everything that we've done. Uh, the world has certainly changed since 50 years ago, and I guess if you ask me that question at 50 years ago, then I'd say it changed from 50 years before that, you know. Uh, there's an evolution that continued to go on. You know, it was a great movement that, uh, you know, I'm sure some people have benefited from it. Well, a lot of people have benefited from it, and uh, it's one of those things that I think will continue to grow.